Welcome back. Uh, let's talk about pH. Uh, this will be an introduction to the pH scale. This is a crucial measurement for reactions. Uh, basically, it's going to tell us how reactive a substance is, so how uh, much it could participate in chemical reactions, how violently and excitingly it could participate in chemical reactions, and also, uh, to some degree, what types of chemical reactions it could uh, be a part of. Let's get into it. Before we really dive into the pH scale, let's talk about some of the real life applications of, of pH. Amino acids are found in your body. Those are acidic. That means they have a lower pH. Oranges have citric acid in them. That's a delicious food that tastes kind of sweet and sour because, uh, again, of how its pH is. Vinegar is just really diluted acid. Delicious. Put it on your fries. Baking soda. That's a strong base. You've probably seen this one before. You've probably used it in the kitchen, maybe. Maybe making some cookies. Maybe making some cookies for your teacher. Mm. Before we can really discuss what pH is, uh, we also have to just clarify what it is we're talking about. When we're looking at pH, we're measuring how reactive a substance is within a solution. So we need to activate your prior knowledge on what exactly a solution is. This thing's in my way and I want it not in my way. So as you remember, all solutions are made up of two components. You've got the solvent, which makes up the majority of the content of the solution. Usually uh, it's a liquid. You have the solute, which is dissolved into the solvent. When they are separated, normally you think of the solvent as being some kind of solid. When you mix them together in a solution, both the solvent and the solute become the same phase of matter. That's important. Make sure you get that down in your notes. They're the same phase of matter. For example, if you have like some sugar and then you mix it into water, you have sugar, which is a solid, water, which is a liquid, and you mix them together, you end up with both of them being liquid. And that part where we were mixing the sugar in, that is called dissolving. So where you take the solute and you mix it with a solvent, that is called dissolving. The concentration is a word that refers to how concentrated the solution is, or effectively, how much solute has been added compared to the amount of solution. Generally, we're going to express the concentration as a percentage. When you take chemistry and learn about moles, you'll express it as a molarity. We'll do it as a percentage, and we would call, uh, based on just measurements, how many grams per how many milliliters. We can also talk about it being saturated or unsaturated. If uh, the entire solute does not dissolve, there's leftovers, then that is saturated, no more can fit. You either need to add more solvent or remove the little bits of the solute that aren't gonna dissolve. Now, pH works because there's ions in solutions. If there's no ions in the solution, then pH is not gonna be a thing. That doesn't mean that ions always mean there's gonna be something with pH, but pH works with specific ions. So as a reminder, an ion is any atom or molecule with a net electrical charge. If it's got a total overall charge, either positive or negative, we would call that an ion. Ions also play a role in electricity in that they conduct electricity. Before I added the sugar to this water, it would not conduct electricity. Pure water does not conduct electricity, but once you dissolve things in it, you end up with ions, then they will conduct electricity. It's one of the reasons why you have to get out of the pool because there's chlorine ions that help keep the pool clean. So ions are gonna help electrons transfer through the solution, and that is going to cause electricity. For example, if we hooked a battery up to a solution that had ions in it, then we be able to move those electrons. See, they're going to go towards the positive end because that's what happens, right? Opposites attract, the negative ions go this way, positive ions go this way. That flow of ions creates a flow of electrons. That is electricity. Yay, diagrams. I love diagrams. Finally, in the video about pH, what the crap is pH? Well, pH is something that we measure on what's called the pH scale. I know, weird, who'd have thunk it? As I said earlier, it's a way to classify the reactivity or how reactive a water-based solution is. And since next year you're taking biology and really at this point we're just kind of being selfish and just focused on life and things that make life work, uh, we're gonna stick with water-based solutions because that's what our, what our bodies are full of and what our cells are all floating in. The water here is 
is the solvent. You can't have other solvents, but in everything we discuss in applied science and everything that you discuss in biology, unless you're told otherwise, water is going to be your solvent. We will be looking at the concentration or how much solute there is inside that water solvent of H plus ions or their opposite OH minus. You're probably noticing that if you could combine these two ions together, you would end up with water. Then you could create a bond there. These charges would cancel each other out. That would leave us with H2O, water, yay. The P in pH is actually an abbreviation that's referring to the concentration. The H is referring to hydrogen. So we're talking about the concentration of hydrogen ions. That's why we call it pH. Technically, P is for the inverse log of the concentration, but uh, we'll save that for college level chemistry, okay? Let's look at pH a little bit more in depth. pH is measured on what we call a logarithmic scale. What that means is every step up is a bigger change than what you think it is. First and foremost, because P is for the inverse or negative log of the concentration, lower numbers mean more hydrogen. Lower means less OH minus. So lower numbers mean more H plus. Higher numbers are going to be for more OH minus or less H plus. Make sure you're getting these ions written down in your notes. Each step lower means you have 10 times the difference in concentration. So if you're going down, you have 10 times more H plus per step. If you're going up, then you have 10 times more OH minus per step. Between a pH of four and a pH of five, you've got 10 times more H plus in the pH of four than you do in the pH of five. So remember, each step is 10 times, but it's not additive. So if we were to go from a pH of five down to a pH of three, we wouldn't have 20 times the H plus, we'd have 10 times 10 times the amount of H plus, or 100 times the amount, 100 times more hydrogen ions in a pH of three than you had in a pH of five, because each step is a 10 times multiplicative increase. That's why we call it a logarithmic scale. Like it shows here on the picture, you have a lower pH, that means you have more H plus. If you have a higher pH, that means you have more OH minus because you have less H plus. So there it is in pictorial form to help you out. On the next page of your notes, you have my friend and yours, the pH scale. Notice on the pH scale, lower numbers are more acidic. We've got more H plus, that also makes them more acidic. Lemon juice is a great example of something with a low pH, meaning it is pretty acidic. Higher numbers on the pH scale are called basic or alkaline. More basic, they've got more OH minus, the ion that we associate with bases. A great example of a strong base with a high pH would be drain cleaner. Notice that both of these substances could potentially be dangerous. A lower pH would be dangerous because it has a lot of H plus, which is dangerous. Something with a high pH would have a lot of OH minus, which would be dangerous because OH minus is dangerous. One of the things a lot of students mess up, they think acids are really dangerous, bases not so dangerous. The farther you get out on the pH scale, either to the side that's lower or the side that's higher, the more reactive it is, the more dangerous it is, the more corrosive it is, the more it's gonna kill you real killy like On the pH scale, because it's logarithmic, Zero is the lowest. Uh, sometimes you'll see pH scales that only go to one, but I've also seen them go to zero. 14 is the highest. That's the highest amount of uh, OH minus that we can have, whereas here we're representing the highest amount of H plus we can have. Remember, it's inverse, right? So it doesn't get any higher in the hydrogen than all the way down to zero. That puts seven right in the middle as neutral. Pure water is a seven, it's neutral. It's not going to react with like anything at all. Being neutral, that means we have an equal amount amount of hydrogen and hydroxide ions, and like I showed you earlier, they'll mix together to make just pure H2O water, you know, for drinking and stuff. The further out from neutral you get, the farther out to either side, the more reactive you are. On your pH scale, I want you to make sure that you label all this stuff, right? Over here, we're more basic. Over here, we're more acidic. Remember, each step is 10 times up. As you move up, you've got more hydroxide, that's OH minus. As you move down, you've got more H plus. So I want you to go ahead and add those ions to your pH scale. Over here, we've got more 
OH minus. Usually we put the minus in front because it's the O that's actually negative, even though it's OH minus hydroxide. Over here, increasing hydrogen, that's H plus the other way, right? Seven, that's neutral which means we could have pure water. Doesn't necessarily mean it's definitely pure water. There could still be other stuff in it, but we've got an equal balance of hydroxide and hydrogen ions. So there's water in there, just there might be other stuff that just doesn't have a pH. So it doesn't, if you have neutral substance, that doesn't mean just glug it down, uh, it could still be dangerous. Here is a little quick list of uh, things that have different pHs. You'll notice up at the top, very dangerous substances. We've got battery acid, hydrofluoric acid. Those will melt you, okay? At uh, the very bottom, we've got drain cleaner, liquid drain cleaner. Uh, that will also melt you, very dangerous stuff. Right in the middle, we've got pure water. Notice right here, when we look at the hydrogen compared to distilled water, one, right, equal. Here we have no hydrogen ions. Here we got 10 times more, 100 times more. Notice every time we're adding another zero because it's a logarithmic scale, we are multiplying by 10. Same thing down here, we're dividing by 10 so it's getting an even smaller amount of hydrogen, but remember, less hydrogen means more hydroxide, more OH minus. So just because this stuff is a really small number for hydrogen, remember, it's still very dangerous. That, boys and girls, is what you need to know about pH. Thanks for watching.